Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Fair warning, if there are any young children or sensitive CNC programmers in the room, today's video will contain probing, macro content, advanced programming concepts, and sub-programs. This will be fun. We're going to show you an example of how we could probe a feature and then have the control automatically update our toolware offsets to keep that part in spec. So stick around. Everything for me begins with my setup sheet. So check this out. I've got a block loaded up. Now if you're tightening up those tools by hand, this is really an introduction to macros video disguised as a probe your part and adjust your tool offset video. Walking through this one example will really give us an idea of how macros work on our Haas mill and lathe. Here's our application. We have a part with a 1.3 inch bore in it that needs to be held to plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. I want the machine to probe that bore and adjust my tool for me, keeping us right in the middle of our tolerance. Now we'll also want to have the machine alarm out if that part is bad, if that bore is oversized. Now, this kind of use of probing and macros is a first step towards lights out machining, towards automation. Here's the start of our code. It starts with an O number and it ends with an M30. So far, so good. After my M30, I've stuffed in a few sub programs. So when we run this first line of code, M97 P1000, it's going to call up sub program N1000. P1000, N1000. When it's done running this subprogram, it'll reach the M99 and go back to our main program. This subprogram contains all of the G code needed to finish mill that 1.3 inch bore. Got it? Our finish pass is in a subprogram that we can call up anytime that we'd like. Now, if that doesn't make complete sense, we've got you covered. We've made an entire video on M97 subprograms and we've linked to it in the description of this video. Not only that, but whenever you see this icon, it means that we've made another video that dives deep into the topic that we're just glossing over right now in this video. So, M97 subprogram for my finish pass. The next code that we'll add to our example program is a G103P1. This code limits look ahead. Now, I place this carefully after all of our machining was done, but prior to our probing and macro statements. If you block look ahead during your machining, you might actually get some choppy motion. Look ahead is fantastic for high speed machining. It can see the turn in the road coming a mile down the way, or it knows that there's no turn coming and it can keep its foot on the gas. So look ahead is great for machining, but when it comes to probing and macro statements, it might cause us to evaluate some type of macro statement too early. So we want to block look ahead during our macro statements. This M97 call, M97P2000, calls up our probing subprogram. Contains all of the code needed to probe our part. It's going to probe the part and write that bore diameter right into variable 188. Now all of the probing variables are listed in the Renishaw Inspection Plus manual and we've made an entire video on that, so check it out. So, we ran our part, we blocked look ahead, we probed our part. Now we're gonna evaluate the probed information and adjust our tool. These next few lines of code are gonna do all of the work for us. These numbers with pound signs in front of them are our macro variables, but they're not all the same. They come in, in three basic flavors, local, global, and system. Now we can see our local and our global variables on the control. We just press current commands and navigate to the macros tab. Any custom macro that we're going to be writing is going to be making use of these variables, but there's a lot of them. Uh, so many in fact that how do we know which ones to use? Which ones can we use and which ones do we really need to avoid? Well, here's a skinny on those variables. These local variables, numbers 1 through 33, are tied to the alphabet address codes used with a G65 macro subprogram call. A G65A is stored into variable number 1, 
uh, G65B value is stored in local variable number two, and so on. So if you see a pound one through a pound 33 in a program somewhere, it's likely being used with a G65 to convey information from a main program to a macro subprogram, or used with some kind of alias G code. Now this is good stuff. It's a great topic, but not a topic for today. Um, for more information on local variables, check out G65 in your manual. But right now, we're gonna look at our global variables. Global variables are what we're gonna be using today with our custom macro. Uh, and the entire point of this section of the video, again, is to remind us which variables we can use and which ones we need to avoid. We wanna avoid using the pound one through 33. Those are used by, by um, sub-programs. But we can use all of these. So there's about 500 macro variables, global variables, available to us on a classic Haas control. We wanna avoid these guys down here. In variables 150 through 199 and 550 through 599, this is where our probe calibration information is stored. Our probed size, like our diameter and single surface information. If we start writing to these variables I've listed down at the bottom here in red, we could wipe out our probe. On the classic control, machines built more than a few years ago, we've got about 500 global variables that we can use. We can store information in there, use them, write to them, delete them, do whatever we'd like. On the next gen control, machines built in the last few years, we've got about a thousand global variables that we can play with. So we have a lot of variables to choose from. And the next gen control is backwards compatible with these older three digit macro variables. It's just gonna show up on your macros page as pound 10,100. So again, if you see a, a pound one through 33 in your program, that's a local variable. If you see a pound 100 or a pound 10,100 in your program, that has no intrinsic meaning. That was given meaning by some macro programmer, whoever wrote the macro that you're reading. So we've got our local variables, our global variables, and now we're gonna take a look at our system variables. We have a lot of information on the control that we can look at, we can grab while the machine is running. We've got our inputs, our alarms, our timers, and this is the one we're gonna look at in a minute, our 2601 through 2800, our tool diameter where. Let's take a look at this one in the manual. Now, like all good macro programmers, I've got the macro section uh, dog-eared or tagged in my manual so I can flip right open and find what I'm looking for. There's my local variables, my global variables, until we reach that number we were discussing a moment ago, 2601 through 2800. Those are the 200 variable numbers that are tied to our tool diameter where. 200 variables linked to our 200 tool offsets. This will make more sense in a moment as we walk through our code. These next few lines will read my probe diameter and adjust my tool diameter where offset, making use of global and system macro variables. Now those are big words, uh, but we're starting to sound like macro programmers. Now I'm storing my target bore diameter in global variable pound 100. Pound 100 equals 1.3. And we know that pound 100 is just a global variable that I'm using to store some information in. Pound 100 is being set to 1.3 in my program. Next, we have an if statement, where the program will branch one way or another based on some logical test. If pound 188 is greater than the value in pound 100 plus one thousandths of an inch, then go to line 3000. There is a lot packed in that one line of code, and there's more info on each one of these codes in the Haas manual, which you can download from the website. That pound 188 stores our probed diameter. When we probe a bore, it stores a size in global variable 188. Remember our do not use list? Pound 188 is on there because we don't wanna to write to that variable. It's used by our probe. We only wanna read information from that variable. For convenience, we'll have the control display the value of pound 188 on our main timers and counters box. If our probe diameter is greater than my target diameter plus one thou, then go to line 3000. That's G-O-T-O, -O, not G-0-T-0. -T 
if statements are just forks in the road. They allow us to go in one direction or the other based on whether the conditions inside the brackets evaluate as true or false. Here's a part that is already out of spec, too large. When it is probed, it says that the bore is 1.302 inches. 1.302 is greater than our 1.301 conditional expression. It evaluates as true, so the code just following the closing bracket is run. The Go2 3000 jumps us to line N3000, where where I have a user-generated alarm code waiting. When the pound 3000 equals one code is reached, the machine will alarm out and stop, displaying the text we wrote in parentheses after the user alarm code number we chose. You can create pound 3000 alarms to say anything you'd like. <laughs> pound 3000 is a system variable. Look it up. You just saw some of our most powerful macro tools in action. This will give you an idea of what is possible with if statements and conditional branching. Okay, different part, and this one is not oversized. It is not greater than our 1.301 limit. This part probes a half thou under our 1.3 inch nominal at 1.2995. The if statement evaluates as false. So the code after the closing bracket is not executed. Instead, the program just continues to the next line of code as if nothing has happened. Finally, we have to adjust our toolware so the next part run is right in the middle of our tolerance. I'm gonna store my variance in global variable pound 101. Pound 101 equals pound 100 minus pound 188. That is my ideal target bore size, 1.3, minus my actual probed bore size, 1.2995. That leaves us with a variance of minus 0 0.0005. That's how much we have to adjust this tool to get us back in the center of our tolerance. The next line, pound 2606. This is what we talked about on, on the great big board. Pound 2601 through pound 2800 directly relate to the diameter where column on our tool offset page for all 200 offsets. Pound 2601 would be tool offset one, diameter where. Pound 2602 would be tool offset two, diameter where. Pound 2606 relates to the tool six diameter wear position. I milled out this bore with a half inch ball nose in tool six. This is the one that we want to adjust, 2606. 2606 equals pound 2606 minus my variance, pound 101 minus a half thou. So every time a part is run, the control is gonna make these small adjustments for us, keeping us right in the middle of our spec. Well, we accomplished what we set out to do. We probed a bore, and we adjusted that tool diameter wear offset. But more importantly, we looked at local variables. We looked at our global variables and our system variables. This is the important stuff when it comes to macros. Now you know exactly which variables you can use and which ones you need to avoid. Follow the link in the description of the YouTube version of this video for the program that we used. Not only that, but we'll link to a, a longer program that's a little more complicated where we go in and probe the bore, rerun the part if it was undersized, and if the part was oversized, we'll come in there and destroy the part. We'll mill away the part if it was bad. So a bad part can't even leave your machine. Uh, this is kind of fun stuff. That's it for today, and thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.